March 28, 2020. I was giddy with joy, feeling strangely liberated. It's an awful thing to say I know, given the horrific uncertainty that comes with the global pandemic. But the lockdown gave me a chance to catch my breath. The last few years had been the hardest of my life. If Adam was still here, I think he might have liked this time when the world stopped and everyone was forced to reconsider what they were doing. I mean, what does it really mean to take care of yourself and others when everything falls apart? Adam's death nearly broke me. It hit everyone hard in our community. Friends and family gathered to grieve his passing and celebrate his life. When I was in a bad way, Sarah would listen. Then she'd take me out to do silly stuff. If that doesn't help your shoulders, I don't know what will. One night when I needed a distraction, she invited me to karaoke, which I don't do myself because, well, I've been scarred from being forced to endlessly karaoke with my dad and my stepmom in their basement. I'll be back with my dad in a bit, but first more on Sarah, the karaoke queen. It felt good being in a crowd of people singing their guts out. It's where I first saw Dylan. He was a bar back, and the first thing I noticed is he was a really hard worker, always scoping the room, clearing bottles, and sometimes jumping up on stage to sing. He was juggling two jobs and playing in the psych band Hot Garbage. On Halloween night, Sarah took me out to watch her karaoke. I dressed up as Death from Ingmar Bergman's movie The Seventh Seal. I was waiting in line for the bathroom when Dylan brushed past me with a bucket. We'd never spoken before. And he said, excuse me, I have to get in there. I need to fix the toilet. I had no idea that in a few months, I'd be locked down with him during a global pandemic. Okay, so self-care starts with breakfast. You've got to begin your day by lining your gut with something good or your toast. I'm a terrible cook. Dylan's not much better. We eat oatmeal for breakfast every morning. In two years, that is 730 bowls each. Dill, do you ever get sick of eating oatmeal? No, I don't get sick of it. Sometimes I think, is this more dessert than it is adult food? Is this cake or is this something a responsible person would eat? Another thing you never get sick of is walking. Dylan can walk forever in the rain without an umbrella and still love it. 
my relationship with walking is a good thing to help remind me that I'm alive in the world. And sometimes if you're inside at home, you're, you know, trapped on a screen. And then when you're at work, you have to be kind of a machine as well as like a, a f kind of a fake social person. If I don't get into the house and walk every day, I will go totally stir crazy. I pretty much live my life in Toronto within a few city blocks. That changed with Dylan. Wandering around with no direction or time limit allowed me to discover a city I never knew. I like listening to the sounds the city makes. It's a beautiful orchestration. And sometimes I play along. I've written down every movie we've watched since the beginning of the pandemic. Dylan and I have watched 272 movies and counting in two years. During at least half of those, we ate one bag of potato chips, sometimes two. Throw in a bowl of popcorn now and then, and you've got potato chip addiction. We love movies and potato chips. Then we figured, why not make a movie ourselves? Sookian had an idea for a film and asked me if I wanted to make it with her. I didn't have much experience, but I knew I wanted to try. One night we watched Tarkovsky's The Sacrifice, about a group of people in a country house by the sea. News fragments on TV report the possibility of a nuclear war. They begin to break down and the film gets very psychedelic. It felt like there was a strong parallel between the characters and Sukin and I stuck at her place. Up the stairs, mono 044. Great. Ready? Mm -hmm. Back a bit. We escaped into our imaginations and figured out a way of making movies with just us two, grabbing whatever was at our disposal. In our movie, we decided that her house would be a character in the story and that the direction would take on the winding, uneasy tone of real life. Creativity is a cure. 
making stuff like movies and music give us something to focus on, a sense of work and purpose that helped articulate strange and endless days. And then the single will be here. Our band is hot garbage. Alex and Julian are a brother and sister, and Mark's their old childhood friend. We've been playing together for six years. The one constant about the band is that we're always laughing. <laughs> Touring kind of allows us to escape from the more mundane aspects of your life. And even when you're back home and working, you know, you're always kind of just looking towards the next tour. We were driving down to play South by Southwest when the pandemic hit. When we realized that we had to turn around, we were all kind of in disbelief. By the time we got back to the city, everything was basically already locked down. We couldn't play shows. We couldn't rehearse. Pretty soon we were doing Zoom chats every Wednesday, because Wednesday had always been our rehearsal day. In the summertime, there was a little bit of a window where the pandemic eased up. All the venues were still closed, so we decided we were going to throw a DIY show. Floordale Beach is <laughs> just this giant, empty, abandoned lot. It's not really a beach at all. And we thought, well, this is a safe place that we could do a show. We were super stoked. A bunch of our friends came out and helped us set up the PA. So we got there. We were ready to go. And then there was this massive rain cloud that came. The thing about social media is it helps to keep a connection to my community. If I can't visit my family and friends in person, I enjoy seeing what they're up to online. Out of the blue, I received a very sweet message from one of the people who follows my Instagram account named Nuera. Hey, do you write originals? Hi Nuera, I write original work. Do you have a specific inquiry in mind? Great. I'd like you to write a song for my son. His birthday is in a couple weeks. Just a simple birthday song with some details about him. Willing to pay you $500 if that's okay. What's your son's name? How old is he turning? What are his best qualities? What are some of his challenges? What's important to him? What makes him laugh? Upbeat would be perfect. His name's Daniel. We call him Danny. He's turning six on September 28th. Call him Spider-Man. I sometimes have to carry him just so he can shoot his imaginary web and climb walls. Haha. <laughs> his best friend is a girl named Jane. She's five years old. I don't want to narrow your imagination. Just want you to do your thing. Sounds fun. This is doable. $300 now. $200 after it's done. Work for you? You can pay the full amount when it's done. Thanks. I use a business checking account, so I'll need your full name and to write you a mobile check for payment and email to send it over. You just deposit it with your mobile app at home. I don't actually have a mobile bank app. I have online banking though, and you can send an e-transfer to my bank account. I started to write an original birthday song for Danny. I wanted it to be simple and catchy. I imagined everyone at Danny's birthday party singing the song and celebrating him on a special day. Here we go. Hello, Danny. It's Danny's day. 
Everybody loves you, everybody loves you, everybody loves you, everybody loves you, Papa too. As you're floating around the moon. I messaged Nuera an update. I started writing the song, but I see that your account is no longer active. Is that accurate? Should I continue? Thanks for letting me know. As she throws you up in the air. A few days passed. After a quick Google search, I discovered an online scam in southern Ontario involving getting musicians to write birthday songs for children and then fleecing them for thousands of dollars. I never heard back from Nuera and only now realize that the proper pronunciation of the name is New Era. We're at the corner of Queen and John pretending that I've just collapsed. And now the previous time that I did it, nobody stopped. We're going to give humanity another chance with this one. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's Toronto for you. You've got to love your friends and neighbors. Coco dropped by with two slices of delicious homemade carrot cake that matched the colors of her hand-knit sweater. And last week, when I went to turn on the bathroom light, the switch broke and made a huge spark on the wall, which totally freaked me out. Seth came over right away and replaced it. And then there's Sarah. Sarah has single-handedly styled me in the most amazing clothes. Even her mom passed down her primo outfits from the 70s, including the quilted peach jacket I'm wearing. It's a bit shorter and thinner than it would have been. Is it a duster? Yeah, Yeah. oh my God, that looks so cool on you. It's cropped. (laughs) No, he's a a scientist. And this is is a hat I made from the excess fabric. I like the coat a lot. Nice. Thank you. Sarah is a disability support worker who knows just how complicated the concept of community care can be. I think it's always good if you if you're asking someone um, if they need anything, like just in the asking of the question rather than jumping in and offering like or like like with disabled people, like um, if someone's stuck, if you just start pushing them, you want to like ask, do you do you want help with this? Um, yes, because sometimes they don't want or need help. help. <laughs> and to, to actually assume that yeah. is, is very condescending. Yeah, that's maybe why it's hard to talk about how, like, community care, like, where it happens, because you can end up looking like an asshole. <laughs> I think the most, like, knee-jerk response to addressing community care would be, like, to to talk about how you like shovel your elderly neighbor's walkway, but it just would sound like weird bragging. You know, I will have to include my my neighbor David then, because he does shovel our walkway. And you are, uh, you're his elderly neighbor, or no? He's, he's my elderly neighbor. <laughs> um, I, our neighbor shovels our walkway for my elderly mother, even though I live there because I am a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> and then I think like maybe my mom like could use the exercise, you know. <laughs> That's my dad, another hardworking senior, on the far left with his Yuan Chi Chinese dance class from a few years ago. And that's my stepmom Winnie beside him, busting a move. Dad's a vital guy. He gets up early in the morning to dance, stretch, and do his dry swim workout, which is exactly what it sounds like. Now, what are you doing right now, Dad? This is freestyle. This is dry swim because I there's no water. I just do it on land. My backstroke. <laughs> Dolphin. Mm. Dolphin stroke. The last stroke I do is the breast stroke. This is the only stroke I, I know how to swim in the water. <laughs> Dad's been through a lot. He grew up an orphan on the streets of Hong Kong during World War II. 
He's seen the most brutal sides of our human nature, yet somehow maintains an open and curious outlook on life. Last week, he was walking around when he took a spill and face-planted on the sidewalk. The photos when he sent were truly terrible. He's in Vancouver, and I'm in Toronto, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, Winnie. Hi. Oh, your camera your just turned just off. Touch something. I don't know what he did. Uh, oh, there you go. No. Can you well, hear me? I think your dad touched the button. Some I don't know what he touched. <laughs> can, can you maybe try it again? Okay. I'll head up now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Okay, now it's okay. No, it's good. Perfect. Okay. Great. Okay, I'll leave you alone now, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hey, turn. No, no, no. Turn it the way it was, please. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's perfect for me. You can hear me, right? Yeah. You're looking pretty good. I, I look okay now. Three days and your bruise went down? Yeah, yeah. Looks so so nice now. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. How did you take care of yourself? The, the, the old method to do it is we make a hardball egg and shell it. And then we, we use a, a handkerchief to wrap the egg and roll around them the, um, the ginger eye. It works well. Good grief. How did you know how to do that? <laughs> really remembers it because when she was young, she always used this thing to uh, to do it. This is the second fall you've taken in a few months. Uh, you <laughs> slipped because of the snow, and I was walking downhill and I hurt my backbone. So going forward, what have you learned from this? Well, I guess the the thing to do is that. Don't try to do things in a hurry. Just take your time. <laughs> hey, so um, I was really freaked out when I saw those photos. Hmm. How can I help when I'm far away? <sighs> Not much. <laughs> Just some comfort wording. Something lies and looking for the future and then don't worry about right now. Unless I'm really feeling really bad, that wise would be right away. You go, should go to the hospital and get a doctor to look you over. Yeah, so I think what I'm hearing from you is it's very important to hear what you're saying. Yeah, particularly when, when you think that I'm, I'm too old to, uh, to get that kind of injury. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? When people like treat no. you like you're old. No. No, something happened with, which you don't really want to see it happen, but whatever it is, it happens. So just try to make the best of it. Dad, how are you feeling today? Doing fine, really fine. For a couple of weeks before I do have my problem with my regularity, but for, for, for the last few days, I'm getting much better now. But uh, so you can try to eat more vegetable and less red meat. Okay, we'll do that. Drink more water. Drink more water, yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks, Dad. Okay, you take care of show again. I will. You too. Have a great okay. day. Bye. 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 Okay, I'll see you later. I couldn't turn my cell phone off. Oh. <laughs> I could ask Winnie. Oh. Yeah, you have to, you turn Let's, it off and then. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Thanks, Winnie. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Bye. When I was a kid, my idea of self-care was hiding when I was injured or sick. Like when I was six, I stole a bag of corn nuts at a swim meet and immediately broke my tooth, which hurt like hell in a moment of instant karma. My gum swelled up and I accurately diagnosed that I had an abscessed tooth by reading my mom's giant book of illnesses on the dining room table. 
Now, I didn't trust the dentist, and I didn't want anyone to know. So I sterilized a steak knife by boiling it and performed self-surgery by numbing my gums with clove oil, which didn't work out too well. I still try a lot of home remedies to feel better, like this aromatherapy egg that mists the room with essential oils that have names like bliss, present moment, and stress release. I've been treating a gum infection with oregano oil, yes again, and a solution of sea salt and baking soda. Now, eczema may sound exotic, but it's not. It's a painful, itchy rash I was born with. Even in the womb, I was a stress case. I've got eczema on my arms, my back, my neck, my calf. It's a vicious cycle where anxiety triggers me to scratch, which ravages my skin, which makes it itch, and I can't stop scratching. October 28th, 2019. I rode my bike to the final session with my suicide loss counselors. Past the spot where, on our last day together, Adam and I sat at a sidewalk cafe in the din of traffic and bulldozers. Today, on my way to the last session, construction is finished, everything is paved over. Smooth black asphalt, a wound like a pothole repaired and healing. But I woke up this morning feeling as broken as I ever was, and sayings like, you'll get over it, or your wounds will heal, just aren't true. You can pave over a street, conceal it, fix it, but beneath is raw, messy rubble. So broken I am, and broken I will be. Let us share what is broken. Let it be seen. Let it be broken. This is where people come to reaffirm their sense of community. A safe place where they can see each other and talk. Everybody's been concerned about all the upheaval over the last two years, but I don't think the dogs really care.
COVID time collapses like dog years. As things open up, I feel a tug of busy, the bustle, hustle, muscle. I want to insulate all over again. But you got to switch it up. So with a few more gray hairs and trigger thumb from phone clutching, I step into the world in search of a patch cord to connect my laptop so I can play music for you.
An image in my head. COVID restrictions are lifting and the world is opening up again. Everybody walks out of their homes and onto the street. We see each other, only we look different, older, worn. I can barely recognize you. You're looking at me trying to place where you know me from. Then we remember. Thank you.